Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi there. How are you all doing? I hope you are studying about the metathesis reaction. Today we will mainly discuss on the Fischer carbons, their synthesis and their reactivity pattern. And if then time permits, we will try to discuss the cyclopropanase and reactions. Now, let, let me quickly do one transformation on the shock carbene or the ring closing metathesis that we were discussing in the last class. What we have seen in the last class is the terminal olefin put together to make an internal olefin or two alkyne can be even put together to make an internal alkyne. What if instead of two terminal olefin, you have one olefin and one keto, can you do the ring closing metathesis on the olefin and keto containing molecule? The answer is yes, you can do that. Let us look at one of those examples. Now, this is the olefin metathesis you are familiar with, the catalytic metal carbene is reacted with diolefin to give you a larger ring containing uh, olefin compound. Now, what we have over here is a terminal olefin and a ketone and in these cases a once again metal carbene, but it has to be a stoichiometric version in this case uh, can give you the same product and without much problem of course, you are going to get a metal oxide in the process. The intermediate that is involved in these cases are the one as you can correctly predict this olefin reacted faster to or incorporate the metal into the substrate subsequently this is 2 plus 2 and a retro 2 plus 2 um, sorry um, yeah 2 plus 2 retro 2 plus 2 gives this one a once again 2 plus 2 and retro 2 plus 2 would give you the metal oxide as the intermediate. Now, the next topic that we would like to move on is the Fischer carbene. You have seen the example of Fischer carbene. We will discuss in brief the structure and bonding and their synthesis. Mostly we will be discussing the reactivity pattern of the Fischer carbene. Now, Fischer carbenes are also widely used just like your Schrock carbene, Fischer carbene are widely also used in synthetic chemistry. In lot of cases it is used when traditional chemistry cannot have any solution and you desperately need that compound. So, let us look at the Fischer carbene and its reactivity pattern. So, Fischer carbene. Now, Fischer carbenes are the one where you have a ligand metal and X R, this is the carbene center. M, your this M is most often not always, but most often it is a group 6 metal X this X over here is usually alkoxide, NR2, SR etcetera. Of course, L can be often CO not necessarily always, but it is all often CO. If you look at the metal electronic structure, of course, there is a d orbital on the metal which is a field d orbital, field d orbital. Now, it can it can bind or interact with the carbene. So, this is the lone pair. Now, X and R is there on the carbene center. Now, on the carbon 
is having this empty C 2 p orbital, this is empty C 2 p orbital overall then you have the donation from this lone pair of carbene and the field d orbital can gives to the uh, gives electron to the empty C 2 p orbital. Okay. That is that is what uh, the interesting part you have a um, you know carbene 2 electron given into the metal orbitals and metal d orbitals are interacting with the empty C 2 p orbital. Now, let us look at the um, you know let us look at the synthesis of this carbene. Synthesis of the carbene is quite interesting and straightforward I would say. Let us say you have a metal carbonyl hexacarbonyl species this metal as you are saying it could be chromium, molybdenum, tungsten and so on. You can react with organolithium reagent we have discussed this briefly uh, over the beginning part and from there on you can have this intermediate where uh, this is a resonating structure between these two species and from which you can put an electrophile. So, basically this is an SN 2 reaction from where you can get your product that is the that is the Fischer carbene. So, this is the Fischer carbene uh, that you are looking at. The most important part of the Fischer carbene synthesis is it is unlike other organometallic intermediate species synthesis where you have to take a lot of precaution. Here actually these final compound are chromatographable, chromatographable you can run column on it. These are air stable even okay. that is great from organometallic perspective if you can isolate purify and react it without any problem that is going to be very, very interesting. So, the characteristic of these species, these organometallic intermediate are these are chromatographable, graphable, air stable of course, that is you know very, very interesting properties and most importantly they are also thermally stable. Therefore, you do not have to worry about the reactivity pattern. Now, the good part of the Fischer carbene is they are equivalent to your carbonyl. Now, in a moment we would like to discuss how can you compare the Fischer carbene with ester and amide both ester and amide has a ketone unit C O right. Now, how does it compare in reactivity pattern with respect to this ester and amide that is the one we would like to discuss. What is the bond rotation energy between carbon and A or carbon and B unit that is what we would like to discuss. So, this Fischer carbene as carbonyl equivalent um, we, we have seen they can be quite interesting in this aspect and they can be very, very beneficial while we are interested in a desired transformation. Fischer carbene as carbonyl equivalent. carbonyl equivalent. The first thing that comes to mind is let us try to put the lone pair that is the integral part. Okay. Now, you can write it down like m minus and this is your plus this is what the characteristic of the Fischer carbon this carbon center is a cationic in nature or positive and the one that you would like to draw further is the one where you have a double bond character between this carbon center and this A or X R in this species. Right. Now, this is a double bond character that means this is more of a in between it is going to be in between a double bond and a single bond. Now, how strong are these bond compared to esters that is where we 
are interested. So, this metal center as it turned out this is same as for m equals when you want to put it as oxo that means ester or amide. Now, we will compare let us say we put it a double bond x r a where it could be oxygen or metal this is we are trying to compare with ester and r and we will try to see the rotational barrier rotational barrier the unit we are have following is k cal per mole. If you have a a as oxygen a as oxygen and then x this x equals o that means, it is a ester we are talking about R C O O R. The rotational barrier is tw nearly 12 k cal per mole for this, this rotation we are talking. Now, x equals when n r or x equals n, then, then we are looking at 18 k cal per mole. If this is CrCO5, that it means a Fischer carbene, now we are dealing with here. Now, this rotational barrier for Fischer carbene, this Cx barrier is 14, okay. and if it is an NR, then the Fischer carbene will have rotational barrier greater than 25 k cal per mole. So, this is very interesting, right. What you see, therefore, then compared to ester and amide, normal ester and normal amide, your Fischer carbene, this uh, carbon heteroatom bond rotation barrier is even higher. That means, it has a better double bond character. Indirectly, it says that the let us say, for example, this one is chromium pentacarbonyl when your x equals chromium pentacarbonyl as opposed to O or oxygen for ester and amide, the rotational barrier is higher. That means, it is much more electronegative chromium CO5 is much more electronegative compared to oxygen. That is a very interesting information qualitatively and quantitatively as well, because the then we can compare and contrast the reactivity pattern of this Fischer carbene with that of the known ester and amide. Let us look at that, how to compare the reactivity between these two species. What we have then chromium pentacarbonyl is much more electronegative than oxygen in electronegativity right that is a interesting phenomenon what we can then do try to do is the interconversion right we know that ester can be one ester transesterification is a famous phenomenon we can can we convert one fischer carbene into another fischer carbene much similar to what transesterification does so interconversions of fischer carbene now, if you start with this chromium pentacarbonyl species and react it with another alcohol, for example, tart butanol, okay, of course, this is going to be a reversible reaction. What you can get is the tart butyl oxide or tart butanol replacing methanol to give you that. Of course, since it is tart butanol, you cannot do SN2 reaction, it has to be the one where uh, you know you see the reactivity pattern similar to the one we have with amine as well. So, you can you can interconvert or you can you can uh, exchange alkoxide with amine unit or alcohol with an amine counterpart, right. Now that is having said that, then that sets up the right platform to do in a number of interconversion that tells you that if you have one Fischer carbene from there on, you can synthesize plenty of other Fischer carbene just by simply exchanging uh, the different alcohol or different other amine. That means, of course, there you have seen there uh, moisture stable 
or air, air stable, they are air stable, they are thermally stable and of course, they are also chromatographable. That means, synthesis of these fissure carbine becomes much much easier and without problem we can synthesize a variety of them. Now, one reaction that really comes quickly to mind is the diels alder reaction of ester because it is a dying dienophile reaction. Your dienophile has to be electron withdrawing in nature and that is how the you know diels alder reaction goes. Now, how does it compare? What do you expect from a fissure carbene? Can it participate in the diels alder reaction? Of course, let us let us try to figure that out. The diels alder reaction that we would like to do with 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 these fissure carbenes. Diels alder reaction as we know we can do with olive um, you know in and ion. So, diene and dienophile. So, if this is your butene if you are taking diene and usually <coughs> we are familiar with an ester over there let us say for OME. If you want to do this reaction at room temperature well you are in for trouble this reaction when even it is x equals O this reaction does work, but at it as it turned out it is little bit longer ok. How long is it? Of course, you have other isomer as well. Um, if x equals oxygen ok and if x equal oxygen with a Lewis acid such as AlCl3 and if x equals CrCO5, what would be the time frame that we are looking at? Well, that is a very interesting one that is how perhaps uh, you know PhD students are there for to figure it out how easy or difficult these reactions are. If you are interested in doing this diels alder reaction with, uh, with an ester for example, the dienophile if x that x equals oxygen can you imagine how long it takes? It takes 7 month I do not know how did they do it perhaps they set it and then waited for 7 month. I hope they have controlled it nicely, but overall what we know about this reaction is it takes 7 months to get even 50 percent 54 percent yield to be precise for, for this um, dienophile and diene to react to give the diels alder reaction. Now, that is quite interesting 7 month it takes, but when you are interested in putting some Lewis acid that means you are making the dienophile much more reactive then the reaction is done in days that is very promising, but can you imagine when you take this x equals CrCO5 chromium pentacarbonyl that means a fissure carbene well that gives the reaction in hours that tells a lot about the utility of this you know fissure carbene reaction how reactive they are compared to your traditional organic reagent ok. Let us look at the yield uh, of this reaction this takes 7 months give 54 percent yield this takes nearly you know nearly days I guess um, days it gives 95 percent yield if this is this takes 3 hour uh, it gives 92 percent. Now, this, this tells you that this chromium pentacarbonyl species uh, they, they are the one acting more of a more like a activated you know ester activated with a Lewis acid ok. Of course, that because chromium pentacarbonyl is much more electronegative compared to your oxygen atom. So, the ester oxygen or this uh, fissure carbene oxygen. Uh, fissure carbene this chromium pentacarbonyl can be compared directly and can be accelerating the reaction quite efficiently as one would expect. Now, that is a very interesting reactivity pattern comparison as you have seen chromium pentacarbonyl or the fissure carbonyl can make the reaction very very fast compared to your traditional diels alder reaction where dienophile is used as ester uh, as compared to 
as compared to your um, you know Fischer carbene reaction. Now, let us try to compare little bit more and try to see how they compare with the enolate chemistry, because all we are trying to compare is how, how the ester reacts and how the Fischer carbene react. Then the en enolate chemistry we should be able to comment on that, we should be able to comment their reactivity pattern and how efficient they are in, in this business. So, enolate chemistry. What we have traditional enolate, let us say if you want to compare this ester with chromium pentacarbonyl, this um, reagent that we get from the Fischer carbene. Now, as you know, lower the pKa value, higher the acidity, where the pKa of this one versus that one, if this is nearly 25 what it is found is nearly 8 that is again very very exciting. If you have an amide now of course, acidity of this pKa uh, or acidity of this is nearly 30 pKa is 30. If you have the chromium equivalent for the same thing okay, now you have with this chromium reagent you have quite acidic CH, this CH is nearly 20. So, this tells you that this is directly comparable, the, the enolate chemistry or pKa value you can have is quite low, pKa low means it is a better acidic, much more acidic. This, um, this reagent or this part when you, you have this CH3 attached with a chromium pentacarbonyl that is much more acidic compared to when the CH3 is a part of an ester. That means, if it is more acidic therefore, what you can think of subsequently is doing the aldol chemistry. As you know very familiar with the aldol chemistry, how aldol chemistry would be? Well, I would say it is going to be very, very reactive and it is going to be very, very active partner in the aldol chemistry, right. Let us look at one of the aldol reagent or aldol chemistry with, with this Fischer carbene reagent and we should be able to demonstrate the efficiency of such reaction. The chromium pentacarbonyl reagent we have and then it is reacting with methyl counterpart. Now, this is the one which we have seen the acidity is quite good and if you have N Bewley at even minus 70, 80 degree C and you are interested in reacting with an aldehyde, we are doing a aldol reaction. Let us write it down, aldol reaction we are trying to do and we get the product quite efficiently in these cases and what we get is the expected aldol product with a very high diastereoselectivity that is done at minus 78 degree uh, you know centigrade. We get greater than 10 to 1 diastereoselectivity, diastereoselectivity and we have nearly 94 percent yield. Okay. Now, <coughs> so I think with that we would like to close on this uh, reactivity pattern of, of the Fischer carbene. As you have seen this is, this is quite interesting, you can have a number of or any example that you know with the aldol reaction, you can possibly think about Fischer reaction, not possibly definitely you can think about the Fischer reaction. Right. These, are, these are much more acidic the methyl group or the pa partner that is associated with the Fischer carbon is much more acidic any aldol reaction that you can think of you can do. You can do the interconversion of ester to amide or uh, you know the corresponding Fischer carbon to one Fischer carbon to another Fischer carbon and so on. You can also have a very good dill shoulder reaction as you were saying dill shoulder aldol reaction. So, whatever reaction you can think of with ester, I think you can pretty much parallel those reactions 
with, and with much more efficiency and shorter reaction time perhaps in most often better yield and so on. And once again these reagents are very, very user friendly right. You can, you can isolate it, purify it and chromatogram it and you know you can it is air stable and it is also thermally stable. So, therefore, you know you can pretty much deal it with as if like you are dealing with ester and aldehyde right. Now, having said that now next topic that we would like to discuss perhaps in the next class mainly is the cyclopropanation reaction. Now, cyclopropanation reaction maybe we will introduce a little for this class and then uh, we will try to close today's class with this with the beginning of some cyclopropanation reaction. Cyclopropanation reaction is a very interesting topic where olefin is converted into cyclopropan by using uh, often as you see diazomethane chemistry and uh, there are various reagent or various catalysts that we use. Uh, most often the rhodium catalysts or of course, you have seen the copper um, copper and palladium combinations and different other combination as nowadays has come up. Let us look at the cyclopropanation reaction briefly and then, uh, then we will close today's class. Okay. So, catalytic we will discuss only the catalytic catalytic cyclopropanation reaction. So, we are interested in starting with an olefin, we want to react it with a carbene, carbene equivalent, carbene catalyst overall what we would like to get a stereocenter of course, this. So, the common catalyst that you found for these cases is the palladium one that for diazomethane chemistry rhodium 2 and copper iodide for ester diazoester chemistry. So, this is in, in the equilibrium with you can see that nitro plus and this is carbon minus COOR. Of course, um, you know you can think of um, think of this diazo reagent diazomethane CH2N2 and diazoester and so on. Of course, palladium and rhodium are the two metal that is used, rhodium is usually often used in conjunction with copper, but it is always it is as if like metal carbene metal double bond CH2. This is the chemistry that is used for cyclopropanation chemistry right and um, this is a quite powerful technique and can give you cyclopropane which are found in a number of pharmaceuticals and industrially it is very very interesting reaction with cyclopropanation. So, we will in the next class we will try to discuss the cyclopropanation reaction they are asymmetric version and also we will try to discuss uh, the application of this in drug molecule synthesis or pharmaceutical synthesis industrially it has been used and it is quite an efficient reagent for for doing the reaction in, in, in both in both in academia and in industrial setup. Well, till then you start reading more on the Fischer carbine and maybe some on also on the cyclopropanation reaction we will come back shortly with uh, more information more uh, more materials on the cyclopropanation chemistry. Okay. Keep reading bye bye.